Many people discover that nature has a powerful and positive spiritual influence. It can help us discover peace and harmony simply by going for a walk in a forest, sitting at the ocean, or watching a sunset. But it is possible to go much further than that, to enter into a deep personal relationship with nature that renews us and supports bringing the world into balance, so that not only we feel peace, all around us feel peace. What I would like to share with you is a method that will support you to develop a rich spiritual connection with the natural world, one that will help bring all around us into harmony. This method is an ancient ritual from the indigenous Bun tradition of Tibet, known as Sir Chu. When I began my spiritual path, I thought rituals were empty of meaning, simply priests going through the motions as a way of impressing believers. But over time, I have come to appreciate that ritual can be a deep doorway to connecting to levels of awareness and states of being that we don't normally experience. Ritual has the power to transform our perspective and to transmit our intention and prayer to other levels of existence. Anthropologists sometimes speak of a universal religion, one that flows across nearly all indigenous cultures. This is a fundamental perspective that the world around us is alive, aware, sentient, full of presence, and that we can and should communicate with the natural world to retain our balance and to encourage balance within the world. That is the purpose of the search of a ritual, to bring balance and harmony to the world around us, to quiet disturbing forces, to bring reciprocity between humans and nature. It is obvious that humans have done much to disturb nature through cutting forests, pumping millions of barrels of oil, diverting rivers, and polluting the air. All around us we can see the terrible results of this greed, skyrocketing temperatures, vast wildfires, increasingly powerful storms, melting ice caps, and rising sea levels. Indigenous cultures from around the world, including the Bun tradition, encourage us to treat nature with respect, with honor, to act as stewards of nature, preserving and protecting the beautiful planet we call our home. All life has its place on Mother Earth. Humans do not have the right to simply treat nature as an object to be cut up and sold. We can and should be leaders in preserving our natural world. How does a search help to repair our relationship to the natural world and bring peace to our surroundings? by making offerings to all those we have offended, to those to whom we owe debts, to all the great wisdom beings, and fundamentally, to all of life. When we make these offerings with a sincere and compassionate heart, all of nature hears us and responds in beautiful ways. After the ritual is completed, a feeling of peace and satisfaction fills the air, fills all of the space around us, Anyone present will feel the peace and experience more harmony within. By doing this ritual, we become more attuned to the natural world and come to live in harmony within it. Simply put, the search supports us to be in harmony with our world and spreads peace to all of our surroundings. There's another powerful and beneficial use of the search. For many people, dying can be a fearful and stressful process a time filled with regrets for all the things not done and regrets for the things we have done in anger or ignorance. The search your ritual can be done for someone who has passed to bring peace and harmony to the spirit of the deceased. And I have also many times observed that it's a powerful tool to help the remaining family members process their grief and loss through making offerings and honoring their loved ones. It's a beautiful way to express our love and respect and to say our final goodbyes. If this interests you, you're probably wondering how to do this beautiful ritual. Sircha is usually translated as burned food offering. In essence, we'll offer food into a fire along with prayer and mantra, and the fire transmutes the offerings as it's carried to all the beings of nature and the spirits of the deceased. There are many variations and forms of Sircha in the Tibetan traditions, and similar rituals in other indigenous traditions as well. What I'll be sharing with you is a modern version that I have composed for a Western audience. 
people that may not be familiar with offering rituals or the terminology used in Tibetan traditions. I have especially drawn upon the teachings of the great masters, Sharjah Tashi Jaltsin Rinpoche and Yongzen Tenzin Nandak Rinpoche, when composing a modern, easy to understand interpretation of this ancient ritual. I'm providing a link to a PDF of a written description of the ritual, which includes instructions. I suggest you download and print the PDF. You might want to pause this video and print out the PDF so that you can refer to it as I go over the ritual. I'll give you a brief introduction here, and then in the following video, demonstrate the ritual in its entirety. The first step is to collect all the things you will need for the ritual, which includes a fire or charcoal for burning the offerings, a small bowl of water for purifying the offerings, incense for purifying the offerings, mustard seeds for setting a boundary around the sacred space, and a bowl of dried foods. Using a fire is preferable, but if you live in a place where a fire is not practical, you can light a small charcoal, which produces very little smoke. Traditionally, in Tibet, the food offering is tsampa, which is roasted barley flour mixed with butter and tea, a traditional part of Tibetan meals. But you may use other dried foods, such as a mixture of flour, rice, grains, seeds, and nuts. The amount of food you need depends on whether you are offering the food into a fire or burning it on a charcoal. I usually use a soup-sized bowl with a mixture of flours, grains, nuts, and butter when offering into a fire. You will also need a small bowl of water and a sprig of cedar or a leaf to sprinkle the area for the purification by water section, and a stick of incense for the purification with incense. The only other item you will need is mustard seeds, which you can get at any supermarket. This will be used to secure an energetic boundary around the space. Now let's look at the parts of the ritual and explain the purpose of each step. The fire or charcoal should be lit at the beginning so that it will be burning hotly by the time we get to the main part of the practice. The first meditation is to enter into a state of complete peace and openness. Just let the mind become open and clear from this openness arises a feeling of compassion for all beings that suffer, all the beings of nature that have been harmed by human activities, all the beings who we or other humans have wronged. Through this compassion, we connect to the Buddha Shinla Okar, the Buddha of compassion. See Shinla Okar appear in the space in front of you, and then let him be absorbed into your body so that you will be performing the ritual as Shenla Ogar, a Buddha filled with infinite wisdom and compassion. This is much more powerful than if we simply perform the ritual as our normal selves. This self-transformation is all done within silence. Though, when you watch the video later, I will guide you in the process. Once we are one with Shenla Ogar, we invite all the guests to our great feast offering by reading aloud the text. First, we invite the highest guests, all the enlightened beings, the guardian spirits, and the wise guides. Then we invite all of the nature spirits of the trees, the mountains, rivers, oceans, and the earth itself. Then we invite all of our friends, all that are suffering, all those that we have hurt, all those that have hurt us. We invite our ancestors, our family, and all beings, and we feel all these spiritual beings gathering in the space surrounding us. If you're doing the ritual for someone who has recently passed, be sure to invite them and offer an honored seat at the front. Then we begin the purification by sprinkling water all around us. We feel that by sprinkling the pure water, it cleanses our mind, all of the guests, and all of the offerings while we read aloud the text and then repeat the mantra one time. Next, we purify our minds, all of the guests, and the offerings by spreading the smoke from the incense in the sacred space while reciting the text and mantra. Through these acts of purification, our minds are prepared to enter fully into the ritual, and all the guests are pacified, and the offerings are purified. 
Then we set a boundary around the sacred ritual space by pouring a small amount of mustard seeds into our right hand and holding it to our heart as we recite the text and recite the mantra. We visualize that as we throw and spread the mustard seeds in a circle around the ritual space, they are transformed into powerful guardian spirits facing outwards who will stop any negative beings or energy from entering into the space. Now that we are ready to begin the actual offering, the fire or charcoal should be burning well by now. As we read aloud the search of prayer three times, we slowly spoon into the fire or sprinkle onto the charcoal the dried food offering. We feel and visualize that we're not only offering the physical food that we see, but infinite mountains of offerings of whatever the guest might desire. The fire deities transform our physical offerings into whatever we intend in our meditation. The enlightened ones may receive Amrita nectars, while disturbed beings get whatever is needed to bring them peace and satisfaction. In this way, everyone is deeply satisfied by our infinite feast offering. After reading through the prayer three times, we sing the Akarame Tutiso Napo Shishi Mal Mal mantra continuously until all of the offerings are given into the fire or burned upon the charcoal. We feel and see in our minds that every guest is served exactly what they have wished for with honor and respect. Even when they seem to be full, we offer them even more until they are unable to accept anything else. In the conclusion part of the practice, we read aloud the praise of the mantra, which explains the meaning of the mantra we have sung. Mantras generally cannot be translated like sentences, but each syllable has symbolic meaning. Then we read aloud the prayer of aspiration in which we express our wishes for the positive outcomes of our practice. Finally, we recite the dedication of merit prayer in which we devote any merit we might have accumulated to the benefit of others. After we have completed the ritual, take some time to simply sit and notice how you feel and how the environment feels around you. Enjoy the moment, resting in peace and openness. That's a brief overview of the search of practice. It will become more clear as you watch the next video in which I perform the practice. I would suggest that the first time you watch it, you simply observe me performing the ritual. Then, if you like, you can practice the ritual along with me, first just reading aloud the text and reciting the mantras with me, and then later performing all the parts, including the purification with water and incense, setting a boundary, and the offering of food into the fire. In a follow-up video, I will also show how to do the ritual using a charcoal, if having a fire is not practical for you. That concludes this introduction. I suggest that you print out the PDF of the practice guide if you haven't already, and follow along with it as you watch the next video in which I perform the ritual.